what is up everybody welcome back to the opening pair this is sunday night at the movies i am keith kilduff joined once again by mr kyle gavin kyle how's your long weekend going so far so good keith yeah pretty decent now can't complain that's good that's good it's uh it's strange times obviously still that we're in you know it's a long weekend you know we would usually be preparing for cricket matches or something but uh, alas here we are watching movies and we've got a really good one to talk about tonight we have Warrior. It came out in 2011, uh, directed by Gavin O'Connor and starring Tom Hardy, Joel Edgerton, and Nick Nolte. Kyle, you've seen this movie a few more times than I have. Um, what, other than the obvious of obviously being an MMA uh, movie, what was it that attracted you to this movie? Yeah, um, I've seen it. And the, I think it's actually the backstory of. Um, we see MMA fighters as these professionals and just, you know, they've no, no uh, softness to them or no weakness or whatever, that type of thing. Uh, but I think this, this just really gets that, that storyline across of the they, they are humans also. They have a backstory. They have to provide for people. They have worries and issues outside of the cage, outside of injuries and, you know, bills to pay, basically. Um, and I just think that this, this film really gets that point across quite lovely yeah no it's a really really it, it this is my first time watching that but I've, I've heard so much about it over the last kind of couple of years and so but it was it's been on my watch list for a long time it was great to kind of sit down and finally get through it but um so yeah ladies and gentlemen we have um we've got five headings that we're kind of go through the movie with to kind of break it down this isn't going to be your average rev movie review show uh, so we've got five kind of headings, and I think we'll kick into the first one. And the first one is what we've kind of named the bar stool overview. What this essentially is, you're sitting around, you're with a group of friends, you're talking about the movie, and you're coming up with this one statement that that hits and resonates home with you regarding the movie. So, Kyle, do you want to go through your your bar stool overview of, of Warrior? Yeah, well, I think I've, I've kind of briefly briefly touched on it there. I am. Um, I think, as I said, it's the type of movie that you can sit down and watch, you know, with your girlfriend, with your wife, or with your family, whatever. You know, it's not blood, guts, gore, you know, serious violence. So obviously, there is that aspect to it. There's that. Yeah, backstory. but it's 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 definitely it's not a, it's not as much in your face. No. It's not you know, there's a few cuts and a bit of blood, but in general, it's Absolutely. not a, it's not huge. Like it's it's not say Tony Ferguson, Donald Cerrone no. style no, no, no. of fighting. It's, but, it's not, uh, there's, no, there's, no, there's no blood bats, there's no, you know, there's no seriously bad language, that sort of stuff. It's just a good, genuine, I suppose, uh, the fact it's based in America, the the American dream of owning a home and, you know, having a family and just being able to provide a, a decent lifestyle for, for those people that you love. And it, it's just that, that's what drew me in. Um, I just feel, you know, it's, it's open to a wide, wide audience. And um, with, with any movie, um, that 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 narrative would stick with the audience's mind much better than say me suggesting to you sit down and watch a UFC fight. You know it, the actual yeah. what sell what what would really sell MMA for me is is the backstories and the human interest in these uh, different scenarios. Definitely, and I think that really ties into kind of my kind of bar stool overview. And essentially, what, what I kind of came up with was that even at our even at our worst as, as people, you know, all we want to do is protect the ones that we love. And we see this with with Brendan. His, you know, he his house is in arrears. He's got ninety days yeah. to kind of sort himself out. You know, with Tommy, we learn. Uh, sorry, guys, just to preface this, this this is a spoiler. You know, full review. This movie came out eight years ago, eight nine years ago. So. Yes, this is spoilers. Um, and yeah. so we, we see with like Tommy, you know, like we, we don't actually learn why he's fighting. It, it's no. kind of it, it's a there's a small scene where he's speaking to um to this woman and it's implied that, you know, that he's there to look after. Her, but we don't quite know what the what the relationship is. And it's only at the end of the movie that we realize that he's fighting in this this Sparta MMA tournament to win this five million pots so that he can give this money back. And again, I just think like it's just you've got such a juxtaposition between two people who are essentially fighting for the same thing. They're fighting to protect someone or something, someone that they love and something that they want to do. Um, and yeah. I just think it, it that, that was the one thing that just hit home with me. Um, but I think that really, that sets us up lovely. Um, and it, it's funny that we kind of have a similar sort of like overview yeah. of the movie, which is nice. Um, and yeah. so that's kind of, that's point one, ladies and gents. Um, so point two is what we've called, 
adrenaline occasion or an instant kick. And what this is, it's it's the moment that where something happens, it could be an action scene, it could be a car chase, <clears throat> or it could be just an, an intimate moment between two characters. And it's something that just hits with you inside and it just stays with you like a day or two afterwards or even like a year afterwards. Um, for me, my adrenaline occasion, it's, it's one scene leading into another, but it's essentially when uh, Tommy's dad, Paddy, um, who was played by Nick Nolte, um, he goes down to the casino uh, to talk to Tommy. And Tommy just rips into him, pretty much just says to him that, that he means nothing to him and that there's, there's nothing in... They have no relationship. He is his trainer, and that's just it. And yeah. as a knock-on effect, Nick... Uh, Nick Nolte's character, Paddy, he has tried all movie to just try and have a relationship with his sons again. He's tried to find something, somewhere, that he could just get an in again. And they're just having none of it. And he just, he talks you know, about being a thousand days sober. And he just goes off the rails completely. Um, and, you know, he the next scene is just, it's alcohol everywhere. And you yeah, just know, yeah. as a viewer, you just know what, what's coming. Yeah. And the whole time, you know, we, we as, as part of kind of his rehab stuff, like we learned that he, he's reading a lot. And, you know, the audio book that he's listening to is Moby Dick. And yes, when, he, yes. when, when Tommy opens the door to, and sees his dad drunk again, and all that Paddy Conlon is shouting is, stop the ship, stop the ship. And I just found it such a like a really strong metaphor for like his own pain because he's gone through so much. He's ripped his own family apart. Um, and then, you know, it's just you, you kind of see Tommy just slowly kind of the eyes just widen a little bit, mm. the shoulders mm. unclench, and he's he's more open to actually helping his dad again. And it just the scene ends beautifully with the two of them on the bed, and, and uh, Paddy just turns up to him and he goes, um, will we ever make it back? And again, it's I just think it's such a beautiful line that while he's so drunk and he's so out of it and he's clearly talking about Moby Dick, we as the audience know mm -hmm. that what he's mm -hmm. talking about is, is he wants his family back. The, the so what's your, behind it, yeah. So what's your what's your adrenaline occasion within the movie, Kyle? For me it's it's quite similar. Like that that scene did resonate with me. I think uh Tommy's sitting at a slot machine and he chucks the bucket of coins over his dad and just basically tells him to get away. It's it, it's a really cutting yeah. moment, you know. It's yeah. it is it, it, it tugs at the heart Yeah, it does. It it it, it tugs at the heartstrings. It really does. Um, for me, um, the the moment that really got me was when Brendan's in the cage. Uh, it's the semi final stage. He's waiting for this unbeatable Cobra, played by Kurt Angle of all people, yeah. um, to come to the cage, and his coach Frank. Frank, played by Frank Rilla, Frank Gambino, uh, turns to him as, and they're chatting, waiting, because I want you to look at him in the eye when he's coming in. But he also says, oh, just turn around and look in the crowd. And it's it's uh, Brendan's wife, Tess, played by Jennifer Morrison, who from early on in the movie is really against Brendan going back to MMA. She yeah, seemed to be... Yeah, I think she says, um, I, I won't watch you fight again. I, yeah. I won't I won't watch you get into the back of an ambulance yeah. again. Yeah. She's obviously seen I think the backstory with Brendan was in the UFC earlier and obviously had a bad ending to one of his fights. He was knocked unconscious and she just didn't want to see that her loved one going yeah. through all that just for money for Which their is house. Fair, you know, and, yeah. and that's the thing, is like it's and and this is where, you know, this position of like what do we do when we're that desperate when we're at our lowest like we do kind of like default back to our like our primal yeah. sort of yeah. urges yeah. i don't want to say urge is probably a bad word but do like no, you know, no. um for, for me you know you ask anyone to play sports at any level like sports is emotion and what's the one thing that can rival sports emotion wise when you're there in that moment is your family, your loved yeah. ones, you know, and I just find that when he looks to her and it's almost to me, I drew comparisons with the Adrian Rocky moment. If you know, when she's in the bed and Rocky won't train mm -hmm. and uh, she gives him permission and he's like, right. Okay. Now I can release. I can just let go on a yeah. fully. I found it just that little, that little moment. When he kind of realized, okay, I have everything I need on my side. Let's just go here and try yeah, and provide my family. 
Definitely, and I think I, I, Frank Grillo I just think is so good in this movie. But I just love that little line where he's like, uh, "On your right, ten o'clock," and then you just see her there. And I think yeah, it, it gives yeah. it gives Brendan that probably extra bit of strength as Absolutely, well that he knows yeah. that his family is behind him because obviously the last yeah. time that we see them on screen beforehand is when Brendan gets the call from Frank Grillo to say that that he's in the tournament and yeah, that he's yeah, going. Yeah. And you know, she's like, yeah, she yeah. says. Um, oh well, that's great that we had this conversation, and thank you for having this conversation with me. So it's great that she was able to get to that point as well, and it, it, it ultimately, you know, it, it fuels his fire going into oh, that yeah. fight against this unbeaten, unbeatable Russian. Yeah, yeah. Um, I find it's, it's as I say that that's it's the common touch story that we've all been there. We've all been in the situation where you know you go against your your partner's wishes, and you know that horrible pull and pull of emotion and that horrible position to be in it you know it's the only way you can provide and you know you need to do it you don't really want to yourself no because he's a chemistry teacher <laughs> like yeah, you know, you know, that's what he well, is well to be fair to him to be fair he had a background in mma and, and this is what we we're being led to believe but he obviously had been yeah. out of the game for so long um but no i just find that moment just really got me i was like okay yeah um yeah, I'm I'm all in now. I'm all in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, so I think we we've kind of we've touched on moments in the movie. We we've, we've touched on scenes, and we've already started kind of quoting some lines from it. So I think we, what we'll get into is we'll get into point three of the review, which is called recall, recite, and what this is. It's, it's the lines that stick with you in the days mm. after. When you leave the cinema and you're talking to your friends and you're saying, oh, do you remember when he said this? Or do you remember when she said yeah, that? Yeah, this yeah, moment yeah. here. So I think my... The one, um, so I had a couple that kind of hit me, but the only line that stayed with me after watching the movie the next day, it's the scene where Brendan and Tommy meet and kind of reunite for the first time on the sand in Atlantic City the night yeah. before the tournament kicks off. And they're having a back and forth and they're having an exchange. And Brendan turns around to him and he goes, you're my brother. And Tommy just looks at him and he's like, I didn't know you served in the Corps. And yeah, Brendan's yeah, like, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't serve in the core. And then Tommy just sharply and just, the, there's no music, there's nothing. And he just turns around to him and he just looks at him and he's got this side head tilt and he's just like, then you ain't no brother of mine. And I just, mm. that line killed me because yeah. this whole movie is, it's about the dad and these two brothers and it's a broken family. And even yeah. here now, Brendan, trying to kind of reach back to his brother and he's having none of it and i just that was the one line that just stuck with me so what what one stuck with you and which one did you ultimately end up going with i i like i i started off my review i suppose very emotional based and and you know pulling the heartstrings but also in this movie there's some lighter moments you know there's some funny funny lines in it and and, and brian callan actually is um one of the MMA commentators, actually a brilliant comedian. Yeah, anyway, he's really him. good in this, I have he's, to say. In he is, the small moment that he's in this movie, he's he really, is, he really is. good. He, he is. I, do, I listen to his podcast and stuff, and you know, he, he he's actually quite a clever mind on MMA and sports, but just, yeah. he's a funny guy. He's just a funny guy. And uh, there's a scene where Tommy comes in and, and uh, it's the semi-final against Mad Dog Grimes, this yeah. Mad Dog Grimes character. Basically, Tommy walks across the cage, takes him down, and just absolutely annihilates him within tw 20 seconds with numbers, numerous punches. Crazy. <laughs> and, he just um, jumps and takes him out. He just literally shoots, shoots to take down. There we go. It's all over. Mm. And just does his thing. His signature thing is he just, when he gets up, wins and walks straight out of the cage. And just with that, Brian Cannon just with the microphone is like, uh, break out the yellow tape, Sam. This guy's walking away from the cage like he's leaving a crime scene. It's just it's very funny. <laughs> it's dark. It's just it's simple. Yeah. You know. He he um, says a, he has a couple of really really good lines. There's another he one does. where he's talking about Brendan, and um, I think it's after Brendan wins a second fight, and he says, uh, "Hitch me a tow bar. I'm I'm getting on the the bandwagon now." Yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's just but it, it's yeah. also just a really good. It, you you can imagine a commentator saying those lines. Oh well, yeah, which I yeah, think yeah. adds to the the realism of the movie. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think what we'll move into, we'll move into point four of our review, and, and the point is called Who I Relate To, and it's essentially our favorite character in the movie. Um, and we spoke offline just before we, we went on air. And what I found really strange was that 
the the two characters that you love and the two characters that I love are completely different. There's absolutely yeah, no yeah. crossover. So do you yeah. want to take, take your favorite character? Yeah, well, for me, for me, it's probably obvious. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's Tommy or Tom Hardy. Um, I, Tommy, I love Tom. Tommy Reardon. Tommy, Tommy Conlon, Tommy Reardon. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he takes goes by Reardon. Maiden. He takes his mother's. Yeah, name. he takes his mother's maiden name. His dad is Tommy Conlon. He wants nothing to do with him. But it's Tom Hardy's character who I absolutely love. Tom Hardy. Yeah. Um, but it's just that 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 guy. You know, we all lo- would want to be. He looks the parish, You know, he's in great shape. Can just go into a cage and knock someone out. Walk out with a scratch on him. But at the back of it, though fundamentally he is a decent man you know he he's is, just had he he's extreme. just had a really he just had a really bad uh really bad experience in the marines to a hard upbringing you know he's he's a tormented soul basically um yeah he's, he's just looking for i suppose meaning or, or peace of mind really you know or peace of mind i suppose it's probably the best way um, and yeah. but just i just i just love the character it it, it, it portrays the the emotion of a tortured soul so well, you know Tom Hardy what he's like. He just yeah, he I think I the the note that I had on him was like Tommy is just a ball of rage, and that's, Absolutely, that's yeah. all he is. He's a ball of rage, and it's only it's only at the end of the movie that he starts to soften, that he starts yeah. to open up, that he starts to unlock himself to other emotions. But um, yeah. I think my favorite character is he, he's in the family as well. But it's Nick Nolte. It's Paddy Conlon. I think he is the dad. The dad, I think he's absolutely right. amazing. Like he got, um, he was nominated for best supporting actor at the Oscars okay. for this movie, and there's just, there's just some fantastic scenes with him. There's the scene where he goes to talk to Brendan to tell him that Tommy's back, and Brendan's yeah. like pushing him away, and he's saying, "Listen, pops, just two ways of, um, two ways of communication: the phone or the post office. Pick one." Ah, very good. Um, there's that scene. Then there's the scene in the coffee shop when Tommy wants him to start training him again. Yeah, and yes. uh, he, he takes the pills off him and he's like, yeah, 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 but yeah. when you walked in, there's there was three shakes there, and then yeah. he flicks him the last one. Yeah, but there's also there too. there's the moment then obviously in, in my favorite scene where he goes drunk again. Um, yeah. and that's just some powerful acting. Um I think then also at the end, you know, he he's obviously sobered up a little bit and he's there rushing to try and get to um the he's, he's rushing to get to the, the arena to get to the fight and yeah, even he leaves, he leaves and then he comes back which i found was unusual yeah that's it's an yeah i think um i don't know like it's just maybe he just wasn't maybe it was too much for him maybe it's too much for the character yeah, to, to be there and that kind of relates into where the media break the story that brendan and tommy are actually brothers yeah so, it gets overwhelmed, becomes overwhelmed, I suppose. Which it's so, it's such a cheesy line, though. I think, and yeah, we, yeah. we can now confirm that the two yeah. fighters that are fighting yeah. in the final are brothers. In a strange yeah. twist of events, yeah, oh, just, you know, could yeah. have been a better way of maybe saying that. Yeah. So I think, I think that kind of leads in then to our last point, and that's literally just going to be our, our rating of this movie out of ten. So do you want to take it away with what your rating is and yeah. why it lost a few points? Yeah, for me, for me, um, there's a few pet peeves, I suppose, from watching a lot of MMA and things like that. There's, there's uh, technical things I noticed, and and just like it's going to sound very nitpickety, but like yeah, the there are things that you can't not notice. Yeah, for me, I, I, um, like all the way through the movie, the the, the fighters are training in a, in a boxing ring. Uh, and we don't see an actual cage until the very last stages where they actually get to the competition. And I just right. think it it might confuse the, the audience with boxing and MMA, you know, being that kind of boxing, being the glamorous older brother, I suppose, of MMA. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of bothered me. Um, the fact that Kurt Angle is the, the, uh, the main, you know, Bad guy, I suppose, for the want of a better favorite word. of the competition. This yeah, big, unbeatable Russian. Yeah, and he and he's Russian as well. You know, I don't know. Didn't work it for me. Right. Um, I think it 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 it, it probably went on a little long as well. I suppose, but um, no. But look, overall, I don't want to be negative uh, either. Um, for me, it's a seven out of ten. Okay. You know, it, it's 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 a good it's a good movie. It's a good. 
sit down uh, and enjoy and maybe get a different understanding of the sport and just human human um, emotions and you know I, I just think I honestly think that you know you could sit down and watch it with anyone and it kind of you can you can you can relate to numerous different characters no matter who you are but uh, yeah for me anyway that's that's what I get so you're a seven out of ten so I so as I said I this is the first time I've watched this movie so I'm interested to see where I, I would where I would be on a rewatch but so I'm so if we see down below there guys IMDB you're saying it's an 8.2 and the rotten rotten tomato score is eight is 83 percent so which I'm gonna kind of fall, which is very good so I'm gonna mm. fall in line somewhat with that and I'm gonna go with an 8.1 out of okay. 10 okay okay I think Tom Hardy is extremely good. I think Joel Edgerton carries this movie. Nick yeah, Nolte is yeah. amazing. And I think Frank Grillo is really, really underrated in the moments that he's there. Um, especially the scene in the, in the middle, in the break after the third round of the final fight, when he, he just refocuses Brendan in the fight. Mm. Why are we here? Are we here to win this fight? I just think Frank Grillo is really good. Where it falls down for me is it's a bit long. It's two hours, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, I think myself, once Brandon gets removed from the school without pay, I think we can leave the school. I don't think we need to go back. Um, and there's also another scene in the movie. It's shot very much like the TV show 24, where there's like okay. there's blocks of, of action. It's a montage scene, and it's, a, and it's another way of doing it. But it, to me, it just that took me out of the movie for a short period of time. But all in all, really enjoyed it. Um, I say it's an 8.1 for now. I would be really, really interested in watching it again, maybe in like a yeah. month's time and see if yeah. that could have gone up or down. But um, that wraps up our review of Warrior, the 2011 movie um, directed by Gavin O'Connor, starring Tom Hardy, Joel Edgerton, Nick Nolte. We are going to be back on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. for our entertainment show. We've kind of put a bit of structure on it now. That we've kind of, Tuesday night's going to be our news and entertainment. Friday is going to be our sports show, if there is any this week. Um, and then every Sunday, you're going to get Sunday night of the movies with the opening pair. I am Keith Kilduff. You can find me on uh, social media, K Kilduff Media. You can find Kyle Gavin at Kyle Gavin 23 on Twitter. And Kyle, do you want to see us out? Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, as you said, we put a bit of structure on it. And I think Tuesday, we're going to cover a little bit bits of entertainment or whatever. Friday, I'm excited for Friday. I'm looking forward to it. We've got UFC 249. 249 preview. Let's go. I can't wait. And I think Sunday, then we're going to look at potentially. Catch me if you can. The, the yeah, De the definitely a Leo movie. I think we're going definitely to definitely a Leo up. movie. But uh, yeah, so yeah, hopefully everyone can join. And uh, thanks very much for your listenership and viewership so far. Cool guys, listen. Please give us a like, subscribe, and comment if you want. Uh, we have been the opening pair, and we will see you back on Tuesday night at eight p.m. Take care, guys, and enjoy the rest of your bank holiday.